morning, good people. This is A Rude Awakening. I'm Sabrina Jacobs. On today's show, the fantastic fungi on this fun drive Friday with Paul Stamets. And, of course, my favorite fun drive guest will be here, too. But first, the news. I'm Christina Onestead with KPFA News Headlines. Voting has started in Russian-controlled regions of Ukraine on referendums to become part of Russia. The Kremlin proxy referendums are largely seen as Russia's annexation of eastern Donetsk and Luhansk regions and shams by Western nations. Russia's war was a topic at the United Nations Security Council yesterday. Christopher Martinez has more. When the United Nations Security Council held its meeting on Ukraine, war crimes and human rights violations, UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres gave the first speech of the day, saying Russia's war shows no signs of letting up. Every day, an average of five children are killed or injured. Almost every child in Ukraine has been scarred by the nightmare of war. The Secretary General did not hesitate to lay blame on Russia for the bombings of civilians, threatening a civilian nuclear reactor, triggering global food insecurity, and now trying to annex Ukrainian territory in violation, he says, of the UN Charter. The hearing drew strong words from many of the 15 Security Council members. Antony Blinken is the U.S. Secretary of State. The very international order that we have gathered here to uphold is being shredded before our eyes. We cannot, we will not allow President Putin to get away with it. He blasted Russia's escalation and sham referenda in occupied territories, saying one man started this war and one man can end it. Because... If Russia stops fighting, the war ends. If Ukraine stops fighting, Ukraine ends. Russian Minister of Foreign Affairs Sergei Lavrov accused Ukraine of war crimes, described horrors in Bucha and elsewhere as staged. Lavrov had arrived at the Security Council meeting right before his speech, and he left immediately after. That did not go unnoticed. Russian diplomats flee almost as aptly as Russian soldiers. Dmitry Kuleba is Ukraine's Minister of Foreign Affairs. Justice will be served. Reporting for Pacifica Radio News KPFA, I'm Christopher Martinez. A team of experts commissioned by the United Nations Human Rights Council to look into rights violations in Ukraine says its initial investigation has turned up evidence of war crimes. They've cited testimonies by former detainees of beatings, electric shocks and forced nudity in Russian detention facilities and expressed grave concerns about executions in the four areas under Russia's attempted annexation. The commission's chair didn't specify who or which side in the war committed most of the alleged crimes. Youth activists have staged a coordinated global climate strike to highlight their fears about the effects of global warming and demand action, especially for those hit by in poor countries hit hard by catastrophic climate change. Protesters took to the streets in Jakarta, Indonesia and Bangladesh, India today. Actions were held in Tokyo, Italy, and Berlin, where tens of thousands of people rallied, calling for the German government to establish a $100 billion euro fund for tackling climate change. The demonstrations are organized by Fridays for the Future. Locally, an action will take place today in Oakland, starting at 10 o'clock this morning, in opposition to a proposed coal terminal at the Port of Oakland and also calling for actions against violence against youth. In the U.S., youth testified at Capitol Hill about climate change and the impacts on mental health. Ellie Prickett Morgan has more. According to a survey done by Blue Shield of California, 75% of youth nationwide and 80% of youth in California have described feeling anxious, overwhelmed, or stressed due to climate change. Many youth, like Giselle Perez, co-author of HR 975, which advocates for greater mental health resources for youth experiencing climate disasters, understand that their anxiety is justified. 
we are anxious about the future. And this anxiety is warranted because today's children will be exposed on a, to an average of five times more disasters than their grandparents. We are facing a potential future of economic instability, mass migration, food insecurity, drought, and stronger and more destructive storms. According to the American Psychological Association, as climate-related disasters continue to increase, more youth will be directly affected by increasing rates of stress and trauma through interruptions in school, disruptions in routine, separation from caregivers due to evacuations and displacement, and parental stress after a disaster. Giselle and Madigan represent many youth across the country and the world who are working through their fears to try to fight climate change. North Bay Representative Mike Thompson introduced H.R. 975 earlier this spring. Currently, the resolution has 90 endorsements from Environmental Group and 40 congressional co-sponsors. From Oakland, for KPFA, I'm Ellie Prickett morgan Face coverings will no longer be required on BART starting October 2nd. The agency's board of directors voted 9-1 to last night to rescind its mask mandate. Most Bay Area transit agencies have already dropped their mask mandates, except for AC Transit in the East Bay. Los Angeles is dropping its mask mandates for public transportation and airports starting today in the wake of declining cases of COVID-19. The director of the L.A. Department of Public Health, Dr. Barbara Ferrer, says although the county of 10 million people will no longer require masks on public transit, masking will still be strongly recommended. Protests continue in Iran in the wake of a woman's death who was not reportedly wearing her headscarf properly. Video shows people in the streets of Iran. Police stations have been burned. Video shows women burning their burqas or headscarves at public protests. The weather forecast for the San Francisco Bay Area today, sunny, highs in the low 70s on the coast, upper 70s to mid 80s around the bay, low 90s further inland. This warming trend will peak tomorrow, Saturday, bringing 90 degree temperatures to much of the bay, upper 70s on the coast. Then it will drop back down to the 70s and low 80s next week. In Fresno in the central San Joaquin Valley, sunny today, highs in the upper 80s, warming to the mid 90s this weekend into next week. I'm Christina Onestead. News headlines return at noon and four and please join us at six o'clock tonight for the Pacifica Evening News. All right, all right, all right. Well, hope everyone is doing well today. We've been getting a little bit of rain here in the Bay Area, but just as reported, the hot weather is coming back. So Got to give thanks for the little bit of rain that we did get. Be grateful. Guess what, folks? We are in fun drive. Let's jump right into it this morning. Mycologist and scientist Paul Stamets' latest book, Fantastic Fungi, How Mushrooms Can Heal, Shift Consciousness, and Save the Planet is the thank you gift being offered up to you for your donation of $200 or more or $20 per month as a monthly sustainer. And it also comes with a cookbook entitled Fantastic Fungi Community Cookbook, and that's by Eugenia Bone. 1-800-439-5732, 1-800-439-5732-kpfa.org. You want to keep that momentum going that uh, Brian Edwards Teeker left us with. So give us a call or go online. And uh, yeah, this is a great book. So we, there was a talk that Dr. Paul Stamets did back in January of 2020 at the Exponential Medicine Conference. And it's all about the interconnectedness, the interconnectedness of our natural world. So let's take a listen. So um, all of nature is interconnected. And this talk is bifurcated into two subjects. One is on bees and the other is on psilocybin mushrooms. Well, in fact, it has good reason. We've come to a confluence and this image from 7,000 years ago, then redrawn, that's the original pictograph, um, is of the bee man. There's a long history of use of psilocybin mushrooms being put into honey. And it may well have made psychoactive meads. And the Beer Purity Act of 1516 actually specifically banned mushrooms from being put into beer. So I want to start at the beginning. 
So when we look at the formation of the Earth 4.5 billion years ago, soon thereafter, the planet Thea came and crashed into the Earth, jettisoned the rubble field uh, into orbit, and then coalesced to be able to form the moon. Many scientists believe that the interface of the oceans and the tidal forces of the moon created a very ideal epigenetic environment for the evolution of life. And so this recently was discovered is the oldest representation known so far of a multicellular organism 2.4 billion years ago, and is that of mycelium. So we advanced forward to 420 million years ago, and this fossil, the fossil was found in 1843 um, for over 100 years as a great mystery. This is before vascular plants, before trees, before flying insects. Well, it was then recently determined by Dr. Kevin Voice that this, this uh, fossil named Prototaxides was a giant fungus, the tallest organism on Earth uh, at that time, of about 10 to, 20, uh, 10 to 15 meters high. So we advanced forward now to from 420 million years ago to a great extinction event. 250 million years ago, it was the Permian Triassic uh, extinction event caused by putatively an asteroid impact. The asteroid hit the Earth, huge amounts of debris jettisoned into the atmosphere, sunlight was cut off, plants, animals died, massive extinction. And because sunlight was cut off and so much life of plants and animals, fungi then inherited the earth. This PT boundary is very easily seen in the fossil record. And indeed, a fungus that was given the name Reduviosporinites was a predominant fungus found in the fossil record at this interface of the PT boundary. So we go then from 250 million years ago to um, 110 million years ago. And recently in Brazil, a uh, fossil was found of a fully intact mushroom. Now this is really important. Mushrooms had their form long before we had ours. So, well, mushrooms, what are mushrooms? Mushrooms are the fruit bodies. They're the reproductive structures. They're fleshy. They tend to be very temporal. They're fragrant. They tend to rot quickly. But it's the mycelium that gives rise to the mushrooms, the fruit bodies. And so when you touch a mushroom, it's really a window into an underground network that you can't see. Here's the mycelium of Psilocybe cubensis growing over five days. And the mycelial networks actually have enormous uh, capacity for size. The largest organism in the world is the mycelial network work in eastern Oregon, 2,200 acres in size, and yet it's only one cell wall thick. Now, the, my, the, we have multiple skin layers that protect us from the infection. The mycelium has one, and yet there can be, uh, in surrounding the mycelium, there can be more than a thousand species of bacteria in a single gram. In a single cubic inch of, of mycelium in the soil, there can be more than, be more than eight miles of cells. <laughs> so the mycelium can grow for 10, 20, 10, 100 years, a thousand years, um, and then surface in a reproductive form as, as in, in the presence of a mushroom. And the mushrooms then release spores. The mycelium is triggered in the mushroom formation primarily before four environmental stimuli. The introduction of rain, water, evaporative cooling that's associated with it. The mycelium wicks up then to the surface of the, nearly the surface of the, of the, of the soil, exhales uh, a carbon dioxide, inhales oxygen, and the fourth one is light. This is really interesting because the majority of mushrooms require light in order for fruit bodies to form from the mycelium. So a primordium then is triggered, grows very, very rapidly, and the mycelium of most of the species that I grow and are my, then what we grow um, at our company um, are sensitive to the blue light. This is really interesting because also with the psilocybin mushrooms, blue light triggers psilocybin mushroom production at the time of primordial formation. The most common psilocybin mushroom used in the world is Psilocybe cubensis. It's easily grown. And the mushroom then, after it forms, it quickly rots. So this is really important that you understand this. Mushrooms are highly perishable. Some people made the analogy they're almost like seafood. They can perish in just a matter of a few days. But upon them, then... Uh, Sporulating, spores germinate, mycelium forms, and then it quickly goes subterranean. So a single 
a cubic inch of soil can have more than eight miles of these fine threads. This sets up the microbiome. It is the foundation of the soil ecosystem. Fungi generate soil. This is, and the microbiomes that are established then help the plant communities rise up, that create the debris fields that feed the mycelium, guarantee the survival of the descendant fungi from the resident mycelium. They are deterministic in setting up ecosystems that lead to biodiversity, because that biodiversity then will sustain their own progeny. So these are governing networks in the, in the, in the food web. Well, we now face another extinction event. And this is something that's really important to me. It should be important to all of you. We have now entered into 6X. We're losing more than 30,000 species per year in a genome of about 8.5 million species. Do the math in 100 years. That's more than a third of the species become extinct on this planet. In 100 years, that took hundreds of million years to, to get us here. It is truly, we're at a critical evolution um, on this planet that if we don't get our act together then we are going to experience unfortunately a, a very very uh, desperate future more than a million species now are are are, are, are subject of potential immediate extinction well, this is also is affecting lots of insects. And this study here, 75% decline over 27 years in a protected area. This is not an industrialized area. This is a, a, a nature preserve. And 27%, uh, in 27 years, 75% decline. Many of you may have noticed they used to drive down the country roads. You have lots of bug splatter. Now you don't see that as much because there's enormous loss of flying insect mass. And in particular, this is striking bees. And this is where some of my research has steered in the past few years, is looking at how we can be able to help the immune system of bees. The deformed wing virus is by far the biggest uh, virus that is threatening bee colonies around the world. And the deformed wing virus is vectored by the varroa mite, varroa destructor. And this mite came to the United States in 1984 from Asia. And it's like a dirty hypodermic syringe. It locks onto the back of bees and injects the, a slew of viruses. Well, it, this now, the deformed wing virus, has become a global pandemic. It's considered to be the nail in the coffin of bees. And moreover, the virus is being spread to flowers. And then other insects become infected. So there's a cross vector of contamination with the flowers being a nexus point. And so bumblebees and wild bees are being infected by honeybees. And so this is a tremendous calamity and a threat. I have a, about 10 beehives and most all beekeepers feed their bees sugar water. So we found, after many years of research, and some of you who have seen my talk here before, I was working with the BioShield Biodefense Program, we found extracts highly active against flu viruses and herpes viruses. And so I thought maybe that these extracts could help the immunity of bees. The summary of our research uh, over about five years, we found that the red-belted polypore, uh, amadou, which my hat is made from, the red reishi, which has a multi-thousand year history of use in Asia, and chaga, also used in Eurasia and Europe, also for more than a thousand years. These are species that had the, some of the most significant benefit to bees. We conducted the largest bee clinical uh, trial in history, 532 beehives in the almond orchards of California. This is also important because 1.2 million beehives from all over the United States congregate in the almond orchards of California. It's another perfect storm because you have all these cross vectors of viral contamination consolidating in a close proximity. And then the viruses then are spread to the other bees and the beehives, and then they're dispersed all over the country. So the summary of our research, Dr. working with the USDA and Western State University, Dr. Jay Evans, the senior virologist in bees for the USDA, he's never seen such strong antiviral activity against bee viruses as he's seen with Stamos' extracts. Now, the deformed wing virus, in this case, 800 179 uh, uh, to 1, a, a very significant p-value, and also uh, 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 80 to 1 between the Amadou mushroom 
and the reishi mushroom. Against the black queen cell virus, we found also significant antiviral activity, 500 to 1. Amazingly, against the Lake Sinai virus, we found a 45,000 to 1 reduction. This is putting 1% of our natural extracts from mycelium into sugar water. One drop per 100 drops. The sugar water is 50% sugar, 50% water. So the summary of these results are shown here. Highly significant antiviral activity with a natural product. Moreover, it also extended longevity. Dr. Steve Shepard from the West State University has never seen in 40 years of anything that extends a lifespan to bees. So we not only correlated a reduction of the viruses by thousands of times, but we also were able to extend the lifespan of bees. This is critically important because bees used to fly for nine days in search of an of pollen, returning it to the mother colony. One bee will pollinate up to a thousand flowers a day. Every almond that you eat was, was, was visited by a bee. So one bee, a thousand flowers a day, nine days, 9,000 flowers. 9,000 almonds. Now that's been reduced down to four days. So it's been more than cut in half because a deformed wing virus then makes the tensile strength of the bees' wings less strong and the bees then end up aborting and they can't do uh, the pollination flights as well. I've been awarded about 40 patents on this. Um, was it extraordinary? Because I'm not an entomologist. I just looked at something different and came up with these ideas. And the patents have been awarded in the United States, Canada, Eurasia, Europe, um, Australia, New Zealand. I've open sourced it for the rest of the world. So we make um, uh, literally thousands of gallons of extract. We produce about 40,000 kilos of mycelium on heavy production weeks uh, per week. Um, so we have these laboratories, uh, Class 100, uh, 100 clean room laboratories. Um, we have laminar flow walls. <laughs> so I, I, I call it heap of filter envy for other scientists to come to visit because our, we have walls of laminar fluids. Um, but the, the patents are... are important because we wanted to be able to spread the solution around the world. So our team here at Washington State University and within our company, we've been coordinating on this for the past several years. And we put out a campaign to raise money for research. And I was astonished that uh, last year, and we've actually raised much more than this, but the last report I got, we raised over $5 million by just through social media and a campaign asking people to contribute to Washington State University um, bee pollination program. So all of this was good. Um, but we realized we had to publish. And I really mentioned that last night, but we published the Nature Scientific Reports. If you know about Nature, only 7% of the articles submitted to Nature get published. We were published Nature. I'm the primary author of my other scientists. And I checked this morning, and we are still, to this day, in the top 1% of more than 264,000 articles published in the Nature Publication Ecosystem. <laughs> And the reason I think that this uh, article has gotten such great attention, in the article my other co-authors pointed out, there's been no antiviral treatment to protect bees before this discovery. That's why the patents have, have also issued. But I've been able to make the argument that natural products, natural extracts from mycelium can offer a broader bioshield of benefits than a pure pharmaceutical. Because we have grown up within the complexity of nature, our immunological fields are very, have very complex uh, sets of, of receptors, and by using these natural products, we can upregulate the immune system, defense in genes, and other genes to be able to, to consequentially uh, empower the immune system so the, the bees are able to reduce the viruses uh, immunologically. And that is the voice of Paul Stamets, mycologist and scientist, uh, discussing his latest book in all things fungi, Fantastic Fungi, How Mushrooms Can Heal, Shift Consciousness, and Save the Planet. And that is a thank you gift being offered up during this fun drive with a donation of $200 or more or $20 per month as a monthly sustainer. I am Sabrina Jacobs. This is A Rude Awakening. And I think... I think I hear someone there. I'm not sure. Wait, I, I hope they brought coffee. That's what I'm hoping. Hey, get in. How's it going? Hey, oh, my goodness. Coffee's oh here. Goodness. Coffee's Ding here. Ding dong. <laughs>
<laughs> I got mine. I got mine in my in my good luck uh, Aloha Friday mug. So as as always, uh, nice to join you with coffee in hand. <laughs> Happy fun drive, Sabrina. Absolutely, and happy fun drive to you too, my dear friend. I am so glad you are here with me on this lovely Friday. And uh, Paul Stamets, I, this guy is amazing. This guy is, he is, he's going to save us. <laughs> what a heavyweight. That is oh. the hope. He, he is. He definitely, definitely is a heavyweight. There's no other way to put it. Now, I want to make sure I get this right because it's a $200 donation. Um, the gift is the fantastic fun job. How Mushrooms Can Heal, Shift Consciousness, and Save the Planet. There's also a cookbook, right? The uh, Fantastic right. Fungi yes, Community indeed. Cookbook. So mm -hmm. that's with uh, that's written by uh, Eugenia Bone. And yes. th that's a package, right? So this is amazing. So it's not only you're getting the knowledge of, of um, and, and not only the historical knowledge, but the knowledge of how... Uh, fungi, how mushrooms are contributing to or can contribute to uh, saving our planet, saving the soil, namely. But you also get this amazing cookbook where, hey, you've got these recipes that are all about healing the human body. I mean, it's just, it's absolutely fascinating. Go ahead. It's a wonderful book. Uh, I haven't had a chance to look through the, the cookbook itself, but that is a separate item mm -hmm. available uh, as a featured thank you gift at kpfa.org for a $200 donation or more. Uh, but Fantastic Fungi, the book, the companion to the documentary film, is uh, not just Paul yes. Stamets, but a collection of dozens of other authors in the field. And I really enjoy the way that Fantastic Fungi, the, the companion book, is, is gathered. You mentioned For the Planet. Well, that's just section one of Fantastic Fungi, uh, second one for the planet, and then there's for the body, and then for the spirit. So it really does cover all the different ways that, uh, that you know, mycelium are, are so uh, important to the, the planet and, and to those inhabiting the planet. I was just fascinated by the, uh, you know, mycelia network uh, beneath the ground, what he was talking about there. Right. It's almost like an internet. The chapter in the book is called The Wood Wide Web. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it's kind of a <laughs> riff on on the fact that it is like a you know an internet structure beneath the beneath right. the earth, uh, that with all things communicating with each other it's just absolutely fascinating and the way that it makes soil it just regenerates mm -hmm. the soil in such a fascinatingly wonderful way uh, this book is jaw-droppingly and beautiful too so there's a lot of the, mm -hmm. the photography um, from the time-lapse photography in the film documentary uh, there are still photos in the book of this just beautiful images of uh, of the fungi so yeah just a, an extremely beautiful and very popular item uh, at kpfa.org it is a featured thank you gift in our donation area and that's fantastic fungi at a 200 dollars donation level or you can ask for it when you call our call center to make your donation at 1-800-439-5732 and you know covering most of all or most all land masses on the planet are huge masses of the fine filaments of living cells from a kingdom barely explored. Um, I, I, I was fascinated when they were like, of every step you take, you're, you're stepping on about eight miles or something, something like that. It was just incredible. So much right. for me. Yes. Yeah, it was like eight miles, more than eight miles of these cells called mycelia can permeate a cubic inch of soil. So it's like these, uh, uh, they're calling them fungal mats. And they're yep. known as the largest biological entities on the planet, with some individuals covering more than 20,000 acres. And this is something wow. that I have been speaking to since, I mean, probably for the last year very heavily, and that's agroecology. This is yeah. a practice that has been in existence for millennia. So it's just... Um, it's wonderful that this knowledge is coming to, to, to Western minds, finally, through Paul Stamets and his associates. So I appreciate it. Again, folks, 1-800-439-5732, one 800 439 5732 Or you can go online. It's cheaper for us, kpfa.org, kpfa.org. And you can place your donation. And we really, truly appreciate it. Another 
a crazy fact, <laughs> Kevin. <laughs> I found yes. out that it's five hundred dollars an hour to run KPFA. It costs us that... five hundred dollars an hour to pay everything, everybody, you know, to keep the lights on, so to speak, right? Five hundred dollars. Yes. So it's it's so important. It is so important so that we can keep giving you, keep giving you community. All of the information, all the unfiltered knowledge, all of the, 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 the good stuff that's going to keep you on the good foot. 1-800-439-5732, 1-800-439-5732, kpfa dot org. This pandemic is over. I am so oh, happy. Yeah, that's what, that's what Joe over. said. <laughs> <laughs> so, so says Joe. I don't know. <laughs> my, my, yeah. my jury's still yeah. out, you know, on that one. Um, yeah, and his buddy but, Phil, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no but, you know, doubt, uh, no doubt. But I, I, well, you know, it's, you, can, you can go outside now. You can congregate for the most part for now. Mm -hmm. So I, I say take advantage of the opportunity that's available now uh, oh, yes. without uh, – you know, so you can, uh, you can, you can get in touch with the land, get in touch with the soil, get in touch with you know gardeners and farmers in your area, and uh, yeah, get 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 that knowledge, that firsthand knowledge of what we're stepping on every time we step outside the door, every time we step on on the beach, every time we we step into some dirt, you know. That this is what's going on underneath our feet. 1-800-439-5732. 1-800-439-5732. Um, and Kevin, I, so Truly there's the, you. let me make, what was that? I said yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we have there's the there's the actual film, um, which we're not pushing too hard, but we're definitely pushing the book and the cookbook. Um, oh, but yes. that film is is gorgeous, and you can view it online. I definitely don't want to leave people hanging as far as that video is concerned. I think you can go to paulstamets.com possibly. Or it's also fantasticfungi.com/slash/film, and they do have that available. Okay, there are the links fantastic. to watch it through Prime and Vudu and Vimeo and Apple TV and Google Play, and I'm sure anywhere you can stream it, uh, you can watch it. But uh, I've only seen the trailer for it, and it is just jaw-droppingly beautiful. It just is a sensational, yeah. sensational work. Uh, so this is a few years old, uh, and it's just really neat that they keep updating, uh, you know, the the companion. So the book, the companion to the film, the cookbook, the companion to the book, which is a companion to the film. Uh, I love this. This is a it is a total package and, and a way that we can really immerse ourselves in the glory of uh, of you know mycology. Uh, it's it's such a an ever evolving field, and I really do like the the their covering in fantastic fungi uh the the spiritual aspects of it too with the you know the psychedelics which have been so important lately and uh they're they're opening up uh the ability to research this in in fields of mental health studies and you know um positive mm -hmm. aspects of of uh you know therapy sessions so that's a really important um, aspect that we've not been able to really utilize before that is becoming available so uh in fantastic fungi you've got michael pollan writing about uh you you know that these new you know strides in in using the ability to use uh, psychedelics uh, for therapy and uh, you know it's just a it's a really great and, and again ever evolving field so this is right up to the moment uh, and just absolutely gorgeous uh, can be yours for a two hundred dollar donation at kpfa.org and as you were saying earlier Sabrina we are in a fun drive and it does cost money to keep the station going as you were mentioning about five hundred dollars an hour and that's not even counting just how many any volunteer hours we have going into this so we have such support from everyone who does love kpfa but i have to tell you right now we're at 492 dollars raised on this hour so sabrina we're still in the red and i'm just wondering if there is a donor out there we do have one caller on the line now um but if there's somebody else out there that can join that caller at 1-800-439-5732 uh help push us into the black you know we need to raise money today so it's great to talk about you know these these wonderful thank you gifts and these premiums that we are offering for your support 
support of KPFA. But please know that by supporting KPFA, that's the greatest gift is you're giving to your community that can't afford to support KPFA at this time. So um, we do have a wonderful array of thank you gifts at kpfa.org in our donation area. Um, but we really do need to, uh, I guess, you know, put the put the coins in the can, as it were. So please, if you're able, make that donation today. Okay. It's crucial for the station's operations, and we really do need your help, as always. So 1-800-439-5732 or kpfa.org. Yes, Serena? There you go. Absolutely. I just, I'm like so anxious to push <laughs> the sustainer. Well, and thank you. The oh, KPFA I just see Leanne sustainer. out of Oakland uh, just called oh in goodness. and uh, made a $200 oh donation and accepted <gasps> fantastic fun oh guy as her thank you gift. Oh so hi, Leanne. Um, one of my hi, favorite donors. Leanne, thank it's you. Nice, nice to see your name up there. Leanne actually uh, made oh. this as a match. Do you want to, do you want to offer this up as a match right now, Sabrina? Yeah, absolutely. How about, absolutely. How about we try to double oh, Leanne's respect. generous donation? Yeah, of let's $200, do it. and if we can get another donor, uh, just one other yes. donor accepting fantastic fungi, we'll double Leanne's donation to KPFA today, and that will mm-hmm. magically turn mm-hmm. into $400 to the station. So please join Leanne in support of KPFA. Accept fantastic fungi as your thank you gift from our station. one 800 439 5732 kpfa.org. How fun! That's and that just put right. us over that yes. mark. So yeah, I 692. Guess. So we are in the black. We are out of the red. Thank you, thank you, Leanne. <laughs> Let's keep it rolling. <laughs> That's right. Become a KPFA sustainer during our fun drive. Keep Help to keep our voice as vigilant as always, okay, during these crazy times. These times are still crazy. That's the crazy part of the, the times that we're living in. I don't understand it, you know, but we're here to try and get an understanding, get as much knowledge as we can, impart it on you. You know, we'll sit, we'll have a discussion, we'll talk, you know. Oh, and I, I'm, which takes me to I'm hoping I'm hoping to start taking live calls. That is what I've been wanting to do for the longest time. I want to engage with the community and it looks like it is going to happen very, oh, very, very soon. Yes, yes, yes. So the, the, this is um because I want to hear what everybody has to say. You know, talking about the, the climate crisis, talking about the sky constantly falling, talking about the desperate times that we are living in, bearing witness you know, living and breathing and, and watching how people's homes are just completely decimated, not once, not twice, sometimes three times, you know, people dying, people becoming climate refugees. It is yes. depressing. And what do yes. we have? We have each other. We have community. We have conversation. We have the ability to connect with each other like mycelia the interconnectedness of community is what we need to keep going otherwise we're facing isolation and with isolation devastation nothing right 1-800-439-5732 1-800-439-5732kpfa.org of course that is cheaper for us kpfa.org more cost effective um so we don't have to use so many well, man, man, folk, hours trying to get these donations processed. 1-800-439-5732. And you know what? Guess what, Kevin? Guess what? What's that? What's that, Sabrina? I, okay, I became a sustainer. Did you? I became Yay. a sustainer. I became a sustainer. Yeah, I was, I, it was. Um, Join the club. Yeah, it was, I know, I was, it was, a, it was a moment. I actually had to light a candle. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> I was so excited. I was like, oh my God, I'm a sustainer. I'm a sustainer. I was listening to, I was listening to Against the Green. I was listening to uh, uh, C.S. Sung and Sasha Lilly. Yeah, mm-hmm. they um, they have an amazing show. They actually, along with Laura Previs, of course, gave me the idea to talk about these uh, mushrooms and mycelia and Paul Stamets and fantastic fungi and all these, th- this amazing uh, collection of information information so yeah there that's one of the shows that has been on for a long long time and been delivering been delivering consistently for a long long time we also have some new shows kevin right mm-hmm. yeah, disorder, is right. law and disorder right? Law and Disorder, yes. so happy to have her so happy to oh, have her she the is feedback has amazing. been extraordinary 
Yeah, the feedback has well, been extraordinary. You know, I keep hearing, getting the emails from the donors. I send out all of the e-blast mm. newsletters and things like that. Oh, and so right, I right, do right, get right. lots of yeah. responses from folks through our social network areas. And yes, it's just a, it's a fantastic show and it's so well received. And we're so happy to be able mm-hmm. to have that, um, you know, going out to our well, listeners. It's testament. always great to mix it up. Mm-hmm. It's testament to the type of people that we attract to KPFA after all of these years, you know, performer, activist to Oakland mayoral candidate, that's huge. Yeah. And she's on our airwaves. I mean, we are lucky to have that, you know, I mean, this is, this is what I'm talking about here. These are the different types of people. This is the type of, you know, attraction that KPFA still holds after 75 Mm -hmm. plus years, 1-800-439-5732, 1-800-439-5732, kpfa.org. We're going to go to the second clip. Oh, we God, are going to go wait. to the second clip. Yes, because I talk about an education. Talk about an education. Paul Stemmets. Paul Stemmets. And uh, let's see here. We can just go ahead and roll it. Yeah, let's just go ahead and roll it. Mr. Rodakiel, if you could, please. Thank you. Thank you. So now I'm going to segue back to the. And so a friend of mine said, Paul, maybe you are the reincarnation of the bee man <laughs> so but this, in the in the northern algeria 7000 years ago about 7 of these pictographs were found they were associated with mushrooms and and uh, and a bee like figure well, how many primates eat mushrooms? This is the question that I ask. Well, there's 22 primates that are known, 23 being humans. The Golgi monkey consumes up to 35% of its diet, 12 times its body weight in mushrooms. Well, that speaks to an ancient ancestry of contact between primates and mushrooms and the knowledge of which ones are edible or poisonous. Two million to 200,000 years ago, the human, the hominid brain suddenly expanded. Homo sapiens appeared around only 200,000 years ago. That's a very short time. At the time of radical climate change, which we're having now, Homo sapiens suddenly had an increase in their brain and language and the arts began to develop, you know, only several tens of thousands of years ago. So this is another view of primates Walking across Savannah in response to climate change, tracking animals. What do you do? Look for dung. You look for foot tracks. The majority of primates eat grub. Uh, fly larvae grows in mushrooms. It's natural to presume that our ancestors would have found these mushrooms. They're hungry. They're tracking animals. They consume them. And then 20 minutes later, you have liftoff. <clears throat> and you'll be sharing this with your family. Uh, you're, you're in a hunting group. The mushrooms are, bo- are large, they're bodacious, um, and they stimulate, and we know now, uh, neurogenesis. Now, how dominant are these mushrooms? Well, look at elephant dung. Look at the size of that mushroom. And so this would happen not once, not twice, not ten times, but millions upon millions upon millions upon millions of times over millions and millions of years. I believe this causes epigenic neurogenesis. And so now Terrence McKenna and Dennis McKenna proposed this as a stoned ape theory um, because of the ability of increasing language, um, the hearing, acuity, visual acuity, etc. And I disagree with them. It's not a theory, it's a hypothesis. A hypothesis is an educated guess to explain an observable phenomenon. A theory is a hypothesis that has been tested and proved, proved factually. But nevertheless, I think we have the opportunity of proving that this hypothesis is indeed has the strengths of being factually supported to be a theory. So another mushroom we're very excited about is lion's mane mushrooms, Heresia marinaceus. There's two small clinical studies in Japan, specifically with lion's mane mushrooms, where they produce nerve growth factors, hericinones from the mushrooms and aranaceans from the mycelium. So uh, there's a clinical study with a mild cognitive d- d- impairment, uh, impairment, double-blind controlled uh, placebo uh, controlled dis- study. Interestingly, when the individuals, after several weeks, went off the lion's mane, their progression towards dementia then restarted. So in this patient population, the continued use of lion's mane seemed to s- s- stave off the, the otherwise natural progression towards dementia. 
Well, it is known that lion's mane mushrooms, the erinaceans, remove amyloid plaques, uh, which interfere in the, uh, with neurotransmission and cause remyelination. That's specifically what they do. They cause remyelination on the axons and nerves, and the consequence of that, the amyloid plaques then are removed. There's really good studies on that. So what our research has been doing is looking at specifically the neurogenic potential of lion's mane and the growth of neurite, uh, 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 of neurite outgrowths. This is from a company, Neurofit, that does preclinical research uh, in, in, in France. Um, we found, uh, surprisingly, but also supported by other researchers, that the mycelium is far more powerful than the mushrooms. So the mycelium, in this case, uh, compared to brain-derived nerve growth factors, which is the, which is the active control versus the passive control, the lion's may increase about 8% of the mycelium. I want you to focus on that because this, this data, I asked them to rush it. This data came in yesterday, and this is what I'm really excited about. So there is lion's mane again, the mycelium, 111%. So it's a replication of, a, of, the, of data that sort of confirms that the analysis is consistent. But we've identified several analogs of psilocybin, which are perfectly legal. I no longer have a DEA license, so I'm not allowed to possess psilocybin. I like to say nature provides. I don't. <laughs> um, but I can go out and find them. I'm a skilled taxonomist. I you know, indulge once or twice a year. This is no big deal for me. I can just go out in any backyard, practically, in Washington, Oregon, Northern California, Hawaii, you know, South America, and I can find these things really quite readily. So, um, but... These other analogs of psilocybin um, are totally legal, and the increase in the neurite outgrowth um, at seven days in sextipulate uh, shows a profound increase in neurite outgrowth, which is an extension of neurons from treatment. Now, I filed patents on this in June of 2016. I beat Compass by 16 months. I basically, from the literature search and the patent office, I beat everybody on this. Um, and the analogs of psilocybin not only being legal, but um, Dr. Pam Crisco and I, she's a, she's a doctor, and I bioassayed these. Uh, no one had ever consumed them in the scientific literature, so I did an N of one study. Actually, there's a report of one of them killing a child. So we totally monitored uh, my, all my vitals, and we took some of these substances fully expecting to have liftoff. And I have to say I was a little bit disappointed that I didn't get liftoff. But we were able to prove that these were actually not psychoactive substances in making you become high. So this is an example from Neurofit. This is uh, the neurite outgrowth by exposure to psilocybin analogs. And this, in case, 10 days from exposure. Um, and they use um, fluorescent proteins that are dyed and they measure the outgrowth of the neurites. So it's $7,000 a gram. But you can grow psilocybin mushrooms for a dollar a pound. So this, of course, the psilocybin per molecules per gram is going to plummet. It never will compete. When you can grow a psilocybin mushroom for the price of portobellos for a mushroom farmer. We grow lots of mushrooms. We have about 700 uh, strains and species in our cultural library. This is in my kitchen with some of my uh, fellow uh, workers here. And these, these mushrooms in particular are hi highly consumed, especially in Asia. Enoki talkie, shiitake, and oyster mushrooms. Dr. Ikikawa, I met him, and he came over in 2005. He works for the National Cancer Center. This is the death rates for all cancers per 100,000 people in Uganda Prefecture. He was sent over there because there was an unusual decline in the amount of cancer in Uganda. After several years of uh, doing uh, epidemiological surveys, he found it was associated with the Enoki mushroom cultivators and their families. It drew down the cancer rate. So that's the, he really gets credit for doing this first study, 174,000 people in the survey. And then numerous other studies have come out just in the past few months. 2019, 
Eating mushrooms may reduce the risk of cognitive decline, the Journal of Alzheimer's Disease, and this is 50% reduced odds of having mild cognitive impairment. This is out of Singapore. Mushroom consumption also has been associated with a statistically significant decline in prostate cancer, especially advanced metastatic. I read this to about 18% reduction. Um, 36,499 men uh, studied. Now, why is it uh, we seeing these uh, benefits uh, immunologically? Well, historically, it's been associated with beta-glucans. But the beta-glucan, I think, is a, is a false positive in the research data. There, what, what's the size of a beta-glucan? There's tens to, the, the tens to thousands of kilodaltons. These are polymers of sugars. And so the beta-glucans have had a tremendous amount of research and attention because they do upregulate the immune system as if there's an infection in your gut. Um, but they're polymers of sugars, and they create a scaffolding. So it's like the macro scaffolding molecularly. But inside the scaffolding, I have long believed and postulated, it's the other compounds, the fatty acids, the polyphenols, other compounds that are embedded within the beta-glucan scaffolding. And so a series of research projects that we did with the University of Washington and I finally was able to with my colleagues be able to say you need to look at removing the polyphenols and fatty acids from the beta-glucan scaffolding they use a lipase and they basically dissolve the fatty acids and when they did it the TLR2 response fell by 83 percent and it showed de facto that the polyphenols and fatty acids had a much more stronger immunological benefit than that of the beta-glucans alone. So, this is not. This has been accepted for publication. This is a complex blend of 17 mushroom species. A thing that many you physicians are aware of: the LPS is the endotoxins coming from bacteria, gram-negative bacteria. It can give an alert to the immune system, and so we use. We then spiked these samples and immunological surveys with, with, with endotoxins of the LPS, and we found it was localized, totally different uh, in the CD69 activation pathways than what our mixture of mushrooms was doing. So we clearly showed that the immune modulation and response was not due to LPSs. Many times it is due to LPSs because mushrooms rot. And when you have rotting mushrooms and you dry them or you get a preparation or an extract from unknown from people who don't have good quality control, you are getting an LPS endotoxin immune inflammatory response. <clears throat> this paper will be out any day. It's the mycelium of the, uh, turkey tail mushrooms that showed that the rice that the mycelium is grown upon it ferments the rice and makes it into a very, very powerful immunomodulating product that stimulates the production of interleukin-1-RA. And so it has an anti-inflammatory effect combined with a mutoenhancing effect. And this is the best of both worlds, so we don't get over-amplification of the immune system. So, excellent article on microbiome. Uh, Dr. Uh, David uh, Newberg, I think, was associated with the National Cancer Institute. Um, this is, shows that definitively that mycelium of, of the turkey tail mushrooms are prebiotic for the microbiome post amoxicillin treatment, which obviously destroys a lot of your microbiome and also reduces clostridium while supporting beneficial bacteria. Now, I have lots of references, and I put up this website specifically for physicians and researchers such as yourself. I read a lot of Google Scholar alerts. A lot of doctors just don't have time to look at the current literature. Several hundred pages long, unbranded, just pure science. So you can go to mushroomreferences.com and you'll be able to put in uh, uh, treatment protocols, mushroom species, disease complexes, and very quickly get some of the best of the peer-reviewed literature that's out there. And that's the voice of Paul Stamets, Paul Stamets, speaking at the Exponential Medicine Conference back in January 2020, right before the panty hit. And uh, folks, that. again, just, a, just amazing education. The, the vast interconnected mantle of mycelia reacts quickly to the availability of plant and animal debris. Recycling carbon, okay, Recycling carbon, nitrogen, sulfur, iron, and other essential elements. When storms, floods, volcanoes, or other natural disasters wreak havoc on the environment, fungal champions come to the rescue, capturing debris with mycelium beginning to recycle. We have become the new natural disaster. 
Okay. And I tell you, this, um, it's just absolutely fascinating. Kevin, yeah. Kevin has a very important position at KPFA. He he oh. develops. <laughs> I, I develop. <laughs> he, he develops. He develops things and such that keep the station alive, that keep that $500 moving through per hour so that we're able to keep giving you this amazing information. And I'm going to hold you to this, uh, Mr. Kevin H. I want yes. my fungi. I want my fantastic fungi. Fungi book. I want All my right. fantastic well, fungi book. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We can mm-hmm. we can get that yeah. to you. You can mm-hmm. go to kpfa.org. You can put your name in. You can put your credit card information in. And you can select that uh-huh. as a thank you gift for your donation of $200 or more to the station. I'm a monthly what? sustainer as well, Sabrina, but I yet, okay. uh, I've yet mm-hmm. to donate during this fund mm-hmm. drive. So, you know, just because you're a monthly sustainer doesn't mean you can't always kick in a little bit extra if you're so led. And I want a oh. copy of Fantastic Fungi <laughs> myself. So I think I might have to uh, pony up this time again uh because it really is such a fantastic <laughs> read i swear that last segment Aww. though that that bordered mm-hmm. on like a psychedelic experience of its own that guy's a he's a yeah. what a mind what a he, mind on, on is it he yeah. something he, yeah. he is yeah. a, he is an am- amazing beautiful piece of work and it's um it's one of those it's one he's one of those people that uh is is providing hope for us, uh-huh. um, mm-hmm. echo anxiety. Uh, I became hip to that term with, uh, you know, talking to uh, Dr. Britt Ray. Um, oh, with yes. That amazing event, yeah, and uh, it's it is real. It it's, it truly, mm-hmm. truly is real. So having people like Paul Stamets to to uh, give us some hope and let yes. us know that that nature is trying to buoy all of this destruction that we are creating as humans on this planet. That gives me hope. That really, truly oh, yeah. gives me hope. 1-800-439-5732. 1-800-439-5732. I just want to say thank you real quick to Christine and Berkeley. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. I, I, yes, absolutely. I'm glad this show is, there is a show that is devoted and I want to keep it that way. So with your uh, your generous donation, we're definitely going to be able to do that. Yes. Um, and David, oh my goodness, big hug to you. I miss you. The, it, we used to have volunteers. I don't know if we're going to be able to do that in the future, but definitely miss David's homemade uh, bread. That's for sure. Oh. <laughs> so thank you, David. Yes, thank you, thank you. And uh, yeah, and then Horatio, thank you. I see him all the time, and I look forward to having you listening to to a rude awakening. Um, thank you so much. I truly appreciate you, and you help me do the good work. And um, yeah, thank you so much. The, this is um. Looks like we're going to do okay for this hour. A um, little bit more is we're, not going to be denied. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> What's that, no, Kevin? No, 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 no. 1-800. Our cup, our, mm-hmm. our cup cannot overflow. Yes, please keep uh, keep bringing it in. <laughs> yes, go ahead. I, I, I don't want to get in the way of your important numbers there, Sabrina. Why don't you please uh, <laughs> rattle those off again for our great supporters in case they've forgotten it. Uh, the Hey KPFA, <laughs> the whole thing, 1-800. <laughs> Four three nine five seven five, three seven. two one eight hundred three two. <laughs> Let's all say it together, okay? I know, right? Yeah, that's right. Let's. Just, we're going to turn it into a flipping chorus, <laughs> folks. One eight hundred five three nine four three nine five seven three two five seven three two. Yes, yeah, or KPFA dot org. Uh, yeah, you know I, what? I think we should do actually, that. I think we should do that. Mm-hmm. I think we just did. I think I'm. I think I'm going to sample that and uh, <laughs> we'll have it ready for <laughs> for next week. We got ourselves a jingle. All right, look at this KPFA <laughs> all the way, <laughs> ever evolving. Thanks to your support, listeners. We've now got ourselves a jingle. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Good times. Good times. Yes. And you know what? It is important to laugh. I tell you because. Oh, Lord, the the information that comes across our paths, the information that we are putting out there to you can be extremely depressing. 
And we got to have a giggle every once in a while. And Kevin, I appreciate you. I appreciate uh, I you. I appreciate being, being here. Make me laugh. Yeah, totally. Thank you. Absolutely. Well, you it know, is so it's worth it. It's worth it. Mm -hmm. It is. And it's really nice to be able to offer things like fantastic fungi that, that, that do give a glimmer of hope that says we are, you know, mm -hmm. we can move in a different direction. You know, we can uh, respect nature and, and the processes of these things and uh, allow them to assist us. Because we need all the help That's we can right. get, and it's not just you know to keep the That's station right. going, but but you know this this the human race. Uh, we need all the help we can get, and so it's great to know that we've got thirty miles of support beneath every one of our <laughs> footsteps. You know, <laughs> from from the mycelium, it's really cool. That's uh, right. They're out there, That's and I, I also really like that. You know, he was talking about the bees, and it reminded me of an earlier segment with uh, that yes. you did on city bees, and just you know, you've That's been right. there for for, for so many right. years, Sabrina, for us sharing this information uh a rude awakening is a wonderful mm -hmm. show and i'm thrilled to be a part of it so thanks for having me on again and thank you listeners for your support uh you can still get in and make a donation today at 1-800-439-5732 kpfa.org uh we do need your help and it's just a it's a joy it's a joy to share this with you and uh and to appreciate uh what you give to us so uh thank you again and uh yeah sabrina thank you for having me on Oh, always a pleasure, Kevin. And we'll be back next week, Kevin and I. We've got to, we've got a huge surprise. So if you're up on Facebook, check us out, uh, A Root Awakening. If you're on Twitter, check us out, A Root Awakening. Uh, we definitely put the information out um, about some, about wine, wildfires, and how that is affecting California. It's, uh, it's going to be an amazing conversation and an amazing thank you gift that we're have available next week right here on a rude awakening we're going to go ahead and close it out we got a few minutes left keep on giving so we can keep on living right here at kpfa 94.1 kpfb 89.3